Hey guys, welcome back to this survival engine tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new world generator, um, which is a really cool feature that I've added in uh, 1.07. So I'm sh going to show you how it works. So first, I'm going to clear the current world that I have here. And then it's really simple. You really just have to click on each things one by one. So the first thing we're going to do is to generate the zones. One important thing to notice here is the seed. If you don't change this value, it will always generate the same thing. So no matter what I do, if I keep clicking here, it's the same. So what you would want to do if you want something different, you just change this value. And when, when you click again, it will generate a new world. Here you can change the size, like this, or the number of zones that you want to have. So each of those zones that are generated here represent one of the biomes. So if you look here, you have all the possible biomes that can appear. And each of the biome has a probability here. So for example, the forest has three and then the desert has one. So the forest has three times more chance to appear than the desert. And then when you're generating the zone, another cool thing that you can do is to just pick one of the corner and change the zone. So if you don't like this one, you think maybe the corner is too sharp, you can move it around a bit like that and you can set it up as you like. All right, so now I'm happy with that. The next thing I'm going to do is to generate the terrain. So as you can see, after you generated the terrain, you cannot change the zones anymore. So that's why this is really two different steps. Then I can generate the walls to make sure that the character doesn't exit the map. And finally, I'm going to generate all the objects. Okay, now we have all the objects. So the way it works, it, it really works by biome. So each biome have a different set of objects that can appear in them and also different probabilities and density that you can set. I'll show that later, but first we're going to finish all the steps um, to generate the world. So after you finish generating the objects, uh, make sure to generate all the unique IDs because right now if I click on a tree, you will see the ID is not defined. So you will want to click here and then finally generate the nav mesh. And after you finish with all these steps, then you should be done with your world and it should be ready to be tested. Before going into the details of the biomes, I'll show you what is the other option that you have available, which is the runtime mode. When you select that, instead of creating your world in the Unity editor, you will let the player generate their world when they start a new game. So basically, instead of setting a seed, the seed will be selected randomly every time the player starts a new game. And then this will also be saved into the save file so that when they load their game or save their game, they always have the same world that is being generated. So in runtime mode, you will want to clear the world in the editor because you don't want to have anything already set up in the scene. You just want to have like an empty scene. So as you can see, um, now I'm in a completely new generated world, which is not the one that we add in editor mode. And then if I start and I click on new game, I will have a completely new map. And it's pretty quick too. Um, the only thing is when you start to make the map very big, it will take a bit more time to generate. But if you keep it relatively small, then it's, it's really fast to, to generate the world. Okay, so now that you know how to use the generic function of the world generator, I'm going to show you how the different biomes work. So we're going to start with the nature biome here, which is the one that we see here in front of us. First, one of the really cool things that you can do is that um, you don't need to generate the whole world every time you change something. 
if you're just testing the properties of a specific biome you can just generate this specific one for example here i can just click on generate biome objects when i select the biome and it will only generate this one so let's say for example i change the seed and i just change this one it will not affect all the other ones and i can do that for each biome one by one like this okay so we're going to do some testing on the nature biome I'm going to select the file here um, not to be confused all the ones that are below are different groups of objects that can be spawned but this is the main uh, biome data here that contain all the different groups underneath so I'm going to select the tree group so here what I really suggest you to do is to go and set your own prefabs of what you want to appear in each biome so here you have a lot that are already set by default but when you go and uh, you want to create your own world you will want to set all the different prefab that you've created in this list so you'll be adding them in one of the groups and each group has their own uh, properties here like density and variance and um, we're just going to play with the density here so if I put a higher density on the trees and I generate again you will see there's much more trees that appear and then I can bring it back down to have less trees and the other parameter here that you have variance this will determine if the things are more like evenly distributed or if you put it higher things will be much more random so let's try very low as you can see everything is split equally these two ones don't count because they are groups of prefabs that I define so as you can see these two are like the same group I'll show you later how you can spawn groups instead of individual objects so I can just remove the groups if I want for now let's say I delete this one we'll try again without the groups okay so you can see things all the trees are more evenly distributed and then if I put the variance maximum things are a bit more chaotic so then the next property that you have here uh, we've already talked about the probability this is really at the higher level when you're defining the zones starting zone um, you want to click on that to make the zone where the player is that biome because sometimes you don't want the player to start in any random biome like the desert or things like that so the player will always start only in the zone that has the starting zone checked here and finally you have all the different groups of items that will be spawned so the order is really important here first it will generate the first one so in this case all the trees then it will do the second one and so on okay now let's do a test with the different probabilities here to show you what it does uh, for example uh, let's say we increase the density of this just to see the result and I put a 5 for flower blue then there should be much more blue flower and then we try again and we reverse then the opposite will happen most of the flowers will become pink now let's add back um, the group I really want to show you uh, one more things that you can do with that because sometimes you don't want to just generate objects one by one because it could be too random and maybe you want something that is a bit more handcrafted something that is a bit more prepared and not too chaotic so what I did for in this example is that I created prefabs that contain more than one things inside the prefab so you can see there's one here this one is really just a prefab that contains uh, seven trees and they are all spawned together instead of spawning the trees one by one for groups you have to be careful because there's one more thing that you need to do when you um, create the prefabs you need to attach the script here called world gen object for regular objects you don't really need that it's not necessary but for group it's really recommended that you add that because you want to define the size so that the world generator knows which size that group has 
so that things don't spawn too close from each other and too close on the edge too. So for example, if you have the edge distance, this means that this group will never appear within three of distance of the edge of the biome. So if you would put this to zero, for example, there's a chance that this group will appear like that and half of it will be in the water, which is not really what you want. That's why I added this property. And the difference between size and size group, the size here is the distance between these objects and any other objects in the biome, so they could be in other groups, while this one is the size just between this one and other objects in the same group. And if you don't add this script to a prefab, for example, this doesn't have it, it will try to determine these properties uh, based on the size of the collider. That's why it's important to add it to a group because there's many colliders, so the world generator doesn't really know which one to pick. Alright, so I think that covers everything for this tutorial. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write in the comment or join the Discord.